Right. Another someone from Finland. So somehow Finland seems to be really over <laughs> popular here. Um, uh, tell me your name and, and why are you here? Yeah, my name is Mikko Ikola. And yes, I'm from Finland. There's actually over 10 Finns in this conference here. And I'm entrepreneur and biohacker. I run three different companies. And then I'm the founder of Quantified Self and Biohacking Community in Finland. And that's why you're here? That's why I'm here. That's what brought me here, yes. Yeah. And um, um, uh, do you have, have a, a goal to be here? Or do you do you want to, to, to gain something from being here? Well, of course, I mean, you never know what's going to happen when you meet new people. So obviously that's that's the most interesting part. And all the talks, there's many. I, I really like the unconference type of type of event. So there's many stuff going on and we actually with these 10 different things we brief each other after the day like what you learned what you've learned because you cannot be everywhere at no. the same time yeah. so looking for meeting new people getting new ideas yeah yeah and um, uh, are you into quantified self yourself do you log anything uh, do you uh yeah, I mean, uh, I, I do measure myself, as I think most of the people uh -huh. do here, so... What I, do you measure? I, I measure my weight, body fat every morning, goes over wireless LAN to the internet, it's easy with the new devices, and also I measure my sleep every day, mm -hmm. or every night, so... Is there, is there a point to, to uh, uh, measure your mm -hmm. body fat every day? Well, I mean, like, if you measure your weight, uh, it takes the body fat at the same time, so there's oh, no, no extra. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no extra effort needed for that. So, mm. so that's that's why mainly. And then I'm on paleo diet when it comes to nutrition. Although currently I'm working on Soylent drink, which I'm gonna tell you more about later. More about later. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's one one interesting thing as well. Mm. And. Um, um, are you uh, uh, a professional in quantified self or are you is it just a hobby well I think it started out as a hobby but now that I've been uh, deep diving more into the topic and learning all the time new uh, it seems very very exciting topic and that's definitely something that's gonna be a big thing next few years and and I, I see that there's many articles for example in Finnish media coming up uh, about right now, the largest newspaper are writing about it. So, so I think, um, well now, because of the Soylent drink as well, I'm most probably going to set up a company with my friends this summer to sell the Soylent drink for for people in Finland and maybe in some other countries in the, in the future as well. So it might, might turn out to be a, a profession as well. Let's see what happens. <laughs> so, so what is the drink? Well, the drink contains everything a human being needs for living. It's in this bottle? It's there, yeah. It's, it was full when I came here yeah. today, but I... So I, it's, it's one bottle a day? It's two liters per day. It contains 2,000 kilocalories, two uh -huh. liters, and that's the average energy consumption um, human being, average human being needs for one day. Yeah. And um, what's in it? Or is, does it differ, differ every day? There's pretty much everything, so there's all the vitamins, proteins, fats, trace nutrients, like micro, micro, everything. So the idea is that it's based on the recommendations by FDA and different healthcare institutions what human beings should get every day. So then we just sourced all the materials, mm -hmm. raw materials from iherb.com, amazon.com, wherever you can get them. and and put them in a shaker and then just blend it. So that's how Soylent is done. So the liquid form is uh, one fifth is olive oil and then the rest four fifth is rice drink. And then you just put the pills and powders in there and, and blend it. Oh, pills and powders, so there's no real um, vegetables or fruits or... Uh, Correct, there's no meat, no vegetables. Nothing that could be, you know, categorized as a normal food. So it's completely synthetic, and that's <laughs> that's how it was designed to be. Okay, and is it any good? It is. It is very healthy, actually. Um, the guy who originally tested it out or invented it, uh, he's been drinking three months, only Soylent, and he said that 
there's been many many positive effects like he's been a lot healthier when it comes to you know skin and hair his mind works much more fluently he's a programmer so you know he he grasps the big concepts much more easily and he finds that other people's are slow you know and and, and there are many many positive effects of course he had to fine tune the recipe a little by little to find the correct one because you know even though I'm experimenting this myself I don't recommend anybody to drink only soylent mm. so it's a good lunch replacement for busy days it takes two minutes you save a lot of time and you know mental energy you don't have to think about do you have food in your refrigerator but then again if you would only consume soylent you would you need to be very careful about the components because every one of us differs what we need you might need more magnesium than I do or the other way around and and whatever so yeah. so you only use it as a as a lunch myself um, I'm experimenting it so I'm drinking around 70% of soil and 30% normal food so when I when I have a dinner with my friends in the evening you know we if we go to some nice restaurant of course I, I want to enjoy <laughs> the social <laughs> experience <laughs> can I taste it please? sure absolutely <laughs> let's shake it a little bit first and yeah, I mean, this was full when I came yeah, this morning. Yeah, I saw you walk with it yeah. this morning. Yeah, but I had an office hour and there was 20 people interested in this. And, and now it's almost empty. I actually had to hide it so you could taste it. <laughs> so, what it's do you think? Well, it's okay. It's, you, you, you taste the olive oil really well, I, I yeah. think. quite nice yeah I mean it's the basic version so it's not supposed to be a super delicate experience when no. it comes to taste it's no, okay it's, you can drink it it's not it's not awful to to to, to drink this it's, yes it's, yeah yes and and I mean you you can find uh, fine tune the taste quite easily by putting some berries for example so blueberries makes the color different mm -hmm. makes it taste and different that's allowed yeah of course I mean you the, the thing is that you can put anything you want. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. so now now we've just measured the optimal, but you can of course fine tune it if you want a different color, if you want to have you know some for some specific purpose. For example, you could easily make a nootropic version of Soylent, which includes some brain enhancers, makes your you know mind work more fluently. Yeah. Not probably a good idea to take every day, but maybe sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So you you test test this at the moment you are on a 70 percent uh, diet of this uh, for how long i tested it for five days in a row yeah i ran out of material now i have more so i will start next week again but during the five five day period it, uh, i i felt pretty good i mean i normally eat very healthy as well so i didn't feel that big difference uh -huh. i i felt more lightweight and and it was did you lose any weight no, it was five days only, so I, not not really. But mm. but some you know this men mental feeling that you don't have to think about food at all. You just you know drink it when you feel hungry. It actu actually it, it can save you a lot of energy for other things. Uh -huh. yeah. it can also be boring. I mean, yes, in a way, if you I would like only drink it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I I agree with you. But you know, it's I I think what what we are trying to do with this. Now that we are going to set up the Soylent Bar in Helsinki, Finland this summer and everything, is that, you know, like if you if you become thirsty, what you're probably going to do is that you go take some tap water and, and drink it. So that's the normal drink we, we, we take. But then if, if you are with your friends, you probably want to open up a beer or want to have a wine. So in social moments. So what we're going to do about Soylent is, is we're trying to create this as a normal food in a way. So... If you're busy having a business lunch, you can have this normal food like you have normal water as a drink. And then if you want to socialize with your friends, the family, you go to a nice restaurant, get the nice tenderloin beef and everything. <laughs> so it depends on the situation. Yeah, yeah. Is Finland a land, uh, a country that, that's, that's really into things like this? Actually, actually it is. There's many, many health-related startups now yeah. coming from Finland. Yeah, actually, there's even two. There's Check My Level and Health Puzzle. So very interesting, interesting companies also present in this conference. And then some, some more uh, common known in general public, probably Polar and Suunto, which are making 
these clock, clock type of things to measure. There, there are many of them, and I think like Finns as a as a nation, they are very you know engineering minded. So tech very, driven. Yes, very tech driven. And if you see like how we built up Nokia back in the 90s, okay, it's not doing that well anymore. But you know, it's very tech and engineer driven, and that's all about quantified self as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you are uh, one of the founders, uh, the co-founders of the of the right. quantified self movement in Finland. Um, how is it doing? It's doing well. It's pretty new. So we started in in this year, in early this year, and we organized first meetup. We handpicked, you know, the best professional when it comes to you know having doctors, psychologists, startup entrepreneurs, engineers. Uh, there would be more people coming, but we want to start out with the, with the most prominent ones. Mm -hmm. It was very amazing event, you know, it was magical. People were so excited. And now we are organizing a public event in the uh, in the beginning of June. So that's probably going to be more than 100 people. And, and we've even uh, gotten some celebrities from Finland involved in this this quantified self movement. So it's really taking off and I just wrote the first article in one magazine in Finland about quantified self. Now there's gonna be one in, in the largest newspaper. And tomorrow I have an interview for the largest women magazine in Finland. So <laughs> it's it's really taking off now. Yeah. So so why uh, and does that um, um well, of course, it's really nice when there's general interest, and especially from from places you wouldn't imagine possible, uh, yeah. like, like the women's magazine. Can you explain this? Why is this interest growing? I mean, there are many interesting trends which relates to quantified self, and I, I would, if I would need to pick, say, three trends, I would say healthcare is one. Mm -hmm. The next one is knowledge work in general and and then then uh, the fact that how everything is becoming more and more transparent so those are those are the areas i, w I would see growing yeah the, would you say that those are the trends trends in what way yeah well if i if i start from the healthcare for example yeah. so so i think the whole healthcare business will turn upside down in the future not yeah. not in a single night but during over many years and upside down you mean yeah, I, I mean that the role of normal medical doctor will change. So currently, what's the situation is that when you have a symptom, you go to a doctor. Yeah. And then the doctor says that you probably have this and take this pill. So you're fixing the sim symptoms, not the root cause. So mm -hmm. that's very fundamental kind of way how it works now. And it's not, it doesn't make really sense. But now that we have the data, we, we have all, all this interesting information about your medical history, your genetic data, you know, like we can build a holistic view. What is your sports? How do you do sports? What is your nutrition? So, so doctors will most probably turn into consultants in the future. Mm -hmm. So instead of going to see doctor for a symptom, you go to see doctor like once in a year or a few times in a year so that you can like discuss together for one or two hours like what are your life habits and how, how are you doing and how you're feeling and let's tune your you know different areas in your life but do you think you won't get sick anymore i think that of course people will get sick and people are different but i think many people today who who, who become sick it's it's very directly related what they eat for example how, how they do sports and, and you know uh, and, and so those things so can be prevented if, if there are like good tools and measurement mm -hmm. tools available such as health puzzle which is creating this holistic view on this whole problem but do you say people are always to blame when they become sick excuse me so are, are people always to blame when they become, become sick not always of course because you know there are some genetical things some people are more easily get affected by some and you know of course you, you cannot take that factor out uh -huh. so but I, I think becoming sick can be easily you know lowered down a lot when when all this information comes available for general public yeah yeah so that that's the first trend and the second one was the second one I think uh, was interesting is knowledge work in general so when you think about you know 
doing any kind of knowledge work. Most of the people nowadays do knowledge work who graduate from university or you know work in Western world. I mean, when you sit in front of your computer, you're working with your brains, mm -hmm. and basically your brains need you know you need to keep fit, you need to sleep well, you need to eat well, to to make your brain function, and 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 that's something that gets easier and easier to measure with all all of these areas in the future and also employers will most probably be very interested in the future how their employees are living from these three factors and i mean it, it may sound scary if i if i say mm -hmm. say it this way but but it can be also very healthy for all individuals and if you implement it in correct way it can be kind of like very nice thing within the work community to you know help other people and, and share some of your data like how I, like like show people that hey look I've, I've slept so well during the last week and I did this this and that to make it happen and and it, it can be like a positive game in a way mm -hmm. so that's what I see will happen in actually might be happening quite near future and some companies are already doing that. Yeah, we, we just had someone here on this table who, who had a company who helped other companies to, to, well, right, to, right. Well, to create a positive workforce. And yeah, to, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, that's underestimated how much it affects to the productivity. So uh -huh. it, there's real effect in there. Yeah, and, and the, the final trend? Well, the final trend I, I would say is that, you know, um, the world is becoming more transparent and we already are cuborgs in a way. So what does mean is that <laughs> human beings are is already... Is halfway a cyborg or...? <laughs> yeah, cy cyborgs, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we already are a combination of, you know, human body and technology. You know, with these things, I can extend my learning for 10 years when I grow older. I can see, I can read, I can learn. and. And when you think about, you know, how to stay in touch with your pe with your friends, it's mobile phone. So nobody could even think about living without with a, without mobile phone nowadays. Mm -hmm. And what will probably happen in the future is that the amount of these devices is actually not gonna grow. Now there are many nice gadgets, you know, people carry around, you know, putting their wrists and whatever. Of course, that's the first part. But in the future. If you heard about Google Glass project, so that will basically integrate the functionality of a mobile phone to your glasses. Yeah. So, so you can just call by speaking to your glasses and also, you know, because these glasses are physically into your body, they can measure different things from your biological activity and you can get the real-time data and share it with other people <laughs> and compare and, you know, there's endless yeah. possibilities. Uh -huh. So that's a, that's a trend you're looking forward to? I think that's something that's just gonna happen and, and that's very interesting space. Hmm. Yes. Okay. What's the been the most interesting thing you've heard or seen here at this conference? Well there's been so many interesting things. I think the most interesting things I've heard from my friends because they've happened to, to meet the correct guys, <laughs> so to speak. But I, I don't know, it's very difficult to say. I've, I've got many ideas and I see, really see the, the whole movement moving onwards. There was a, I, I think one thing that was interesting was quantified self journal. So actually at the same time we were having this interview, these guys are planning a journal about quantified self, like a peer review. So you could release some research from universities in this paper, get mm -hmm. peer reviewed, and that makes it easier to raise funding for such a research project. So I think that's pretty good movement in from the scientific perspective which also br brings some credibility on the table so you've had a good time i have an awesome time okay thank you very much thank you very much